Hi, and welcome back to another editing session with me at Tip Tip Studio. Today, we're working with a few of the more complicated edits from our recent candles shoot. I realized I didn't do a very good job at screen capturing this, so let me explain what's going on here in Lightroom. I almost always start my editing process here in Lightroom. I probably sound like a broken record to my regular viewers, but I only focus on basic adjustments here. That includes usually increasing the exposure a bit, which I usually do this as the last step. I also almost always increase the contrast at least by 20. Then, depending on how the photo was shot and the end result I'm trying to achieve, I'll play around with the highlights, shadows, blacks, and whites. These can either be increased or decreased depending on the result I'm looking for, but I usually adjust a bit on all four. I also always make sure the photo is straightened and I usually let Lightroom auto adjust for me. However, I tend to only crop in Photoshop, not in Lightroom. Other adjustments I've been playing around with lately are increasing clarity, but always to a number less than 10. Also, I only ever increase clarity when it comes to product photography. If there's ever a model or body part on the shot, I would leave this alone or even decrease it instead. I've also recently discovered dehaze and I'll usually increase its value, but only slightly so it doesn't look super edited or too contrasting. And because I like a slightly dreamier, softer look in my work, I'll also go down to luminance and increase the value a little, but never more than 20. Since this shoot was designed to have the same background and lighting set up for all shots, I made all my adjustments in the first image and am applying the exact same adjustments to the rest of the images. The only thing I'm checking separately is to see if the image is properly straightened. To apply the exact same adjustments, just click on the previous button. I'll let you see everything take place in real time for this last photo. Sometimes I'll apply edits on more than one version of the same setup to see what looks best. Moving on to Photoshop. In this first photo, we've got a few major things to change. First off, I didn't have quite the same background color as the branding, so we need to adjust for that. I've pulled up a reference from their website. There's a few ways to do this, but since this is quite a change, I'll use the hue saturation adjustment layer. Making sure the colorize option is checked, I'll move the sliders for all three options until I get the exact color it needs to be. Here's a before and after of what a change that made. I also realized I should have cleaned up the background as the first step. As you can see, there's some highlighted and rippled sections in the background, and we need to fix that so it all looks like an even color. Easiest way to do that is to use the paintbrush tool and have the opacity at somewhere between 20 to 50% and brush in the color to fill in the highlighted areas. 
you want to avoid just filling in the background with a solid color to even everything out since that looks fake and one dimensional. Once we have our background evened out, we'll just mask out the areas that we accidentally painted over. Okay, now let's turn back on the hue adjustment layer for the background. I'm just making a couple of tweaks here and there to get the right shade of gold. And I'm also adding a bit of a lighter gradient fill in the corner to really add some drama to this image. To create a lighter effect, I usually choose screen as the blending mode. And like before, we'll mask out all the areas that don't need the hue saturation adjustment layer or the gradient layer. And now comes the fun part. I'm adding a bunch of various adjustment layers such as curves and levels to really give the image drama and depth. The focus here isn't to change any colors, I just want to enhance all of the props. I could have probably stopped like five adjustment layers ago, but it wouldn't be a true Tiff Tiff Studio photo without being over edited. How do you know when it's time to stop editing, painting, etc? How many details is too much? How many adjustments is overkill? I know many creatives struggle with this, so I'd love to get your opinion in the comments below. This next one was a fun one to shoot. We have to tackle some of the same edits as the previous one, mainly the background color. But first, if you look closely, some of these lollipops aren't in focus or the swirl isn't as aesthetically pleasing as the others. So I'm going to copy a lollipop that I think looks good as is and paste it in here. I'll then transform it accordingly to fit the lollipops that need editing, such as this one in the front. Keep in mind that these lollipops are all placed at slightly different angles, so we can't just adjust for size. We have to pay attention to the angle and perspective too, which is pretty evident through the swirl pattern. To adjust for this, I usually use skew, distort, or perspective. Sometimes warp can also work, but that's a bit tricky to work with here because of the swirl. Once everything looks good, mask out the lollipop. In order for this video to not be super repetitive and negatively affect my viewer retention, I'm going to speed up the next few steps. To summarize, we're doing the same few steps as the previous photo to even out the background and to adjust it to the same gold color. To make things easier, I'm simply pasting in the exact same hue saturation adjustment layer from before since these were all shot with the same lighting settings. The only settings I'm adjusting a bit are the size of the gradient and its intensity. A lot of times, I'll also paste in the same curves and levels adjustment layers, but I'll modify them a bit to see what suits this specific image the best. And in this case, I want to alter the color of the round blocks too, since the white is a bit too bright with this gold background. To do so, we'll create a new separate hue saturation adjustment layer that will be just for the blocks. I'm thinking a very light and subtle gold beige color will be nice. And then for the last part of the edit, I'm going into all the details and doing retouching. So for this image, it would be things like getting rid of the putty used to hold the lollipops, editing out dust and scratches, you get the idea. Moving on to the next one, I've already evened out the background and we're going to composite in a spoon next. I've shot the spoon as a separate image but using the exact same backdrop and lighting setup. 
we're going to roughly select the spoon and copy and paste it into our candle image. The spoon's placement is a bit tricky since my hand is not supposed to be in the shot, which means I need to move it close to the left edge but make sure it's still positioned over the candle. Also, want to double check that this placement also works for an Instagram 4 to 5 crop without cutting anything out. I think this placement and size looks good, so let's mask out the background, leaving just the spoon. Sometimes the direct selection tool is great at selecting the shape of objects and sometimes it leaves a little extra behind. Using the magnetic lasso tool for more control and precision, I'm going to manually select the areas that still need to be masked out. Also using the clone stamp to get rid of the New Zealand logo since that has nothing to do with this candle brand and then switching to clone and patch tools to get rid of my finger. Besides the usual edits you must be very familiar with by now, we're going to composite in an in-focus candle and I'll also show you how to edit a reflective surface such as this coffee pot. I'm roughly selecting and then copying and pasting an in-focus candle from another image into this one. And then I'll lower the opacity on the new candle so I can move and resize it to match the original one. I've been trying to use Photoshop's image stacking tool, but it's never worked for me. Has anyone had success with this? Are my images or objects too complicated for this tool to work? I know you came to me for answers and guides, but I thought I would try asking for some advice from you guys too. Since that didn't work, I'll just manually composite it, which means leave the new layer at 100% opacity and mask out the background using soft edge eraser so everything blends. Okay, moving on to the mocha pot. Reflections can be a bit tricky to retouch, but I'll share some tips. To start off, we're going to fix the smudges and blemishes. The metal texture is pretty smooth, so I'm using a mix of patch tool and spot healing tool. Probably wouldn't have to spend so much time on this step if I actually cleaned my mocha pot properly. Anyone else also use the photography props in their daily lives? Or do you prefer to use a separate version for such purposes? Let me know in the comments. Here's a quick before and after. I've gone ahead and retouched and adjusted the background color in the same way as the previous images. But as you can see, the background color is kind of reflected onto the coffee pot. And the color you see now in the reflection has not been adjusted as the background has. So we're going to our hue saturation layer responsible for our new background color and we're going to mask in the adjustment using an eraser at around 40%. We're only masking in the areas on the pot that reflect the background color, not masking in the entire pot. Here's a before and after. The important thing to note about reflective surfaces is that they show parts of their environment. If something in the environment changes, you have to double check the reflection is also consistent with that change. For our last photo, it's looking a bit plain right now, but that's because we're going to create a literal garden in Photoshop and I'm going to show you how. I took photos of the flowers I'm using for the garden in various angles and placements with the same lighting setup. So now I'm just copying and pasting these flowers 
from all the images into this one image. I'm leaving their backgrounds, sizes, and placements as is for now. As the first step, I just want to get them all in this image. Okay, so now it's looking so chaotic that I can't even see the candle anymore. I don't really know what I'm looking at. So I'm going to create masks for each flower layer and start roughly masking out their backgrounds. all the flowers ready so I'm going to select all of the flower layers and scale them down slightly. I might adjust the size a bit more later on as I edit but I can see now for sure they are all too big. And then I'm going to move around each flower to the place where I want it to go. I don't have a set layout in mind, I just knew I wanted the gardenias and jasmine to be mixed evenly and the blurred jasmine to be at the bottom. So it's all about playing around and trial and error. As I'm settling on the placement of certain flowers, I'll also start to clean up their edges and get rid of any remaining background areas. As I'm working on the layout, I'm also realizing that I don't need this many flowers, so I'm deleting a few. I'm also adjusting the angle on some of them slightly. I would avoid flipping or angling them too much because then their highlights and shadows placement might not make sense anymore. I've just added in the same background edits I've been using this whole time. These background adjustment layers should be placed between the base image and these flower layers. Once again, I'm seeing what this image will look like with a 4x5 crop for Instagram. This is important to check when you have a very specific layout. A couple more small adjustments to placements and we're done.